Uh, Matt Gangwer, the Senior Director with Sophos Managed Threat Response. Matt, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Good man. And look, thank you very much for your patience. You're in uh, Indiana, is that correct? That is correct. Yep. The, nice. the Midwest. Midwest. Very good. Uh, I've only been to Chicago. That's as close as I've got to you, wherever you are. So look, um, uh, Microsoft Exchange, it's pretty hot news. It's going to continue on. In fact, I've got some research out of uh, ESET uh, today as well. I haven't put it up yet, but they've been monitoring it and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So yeah, those in the industry probably probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but it uh, first popped up last Friday. Was that right? Um, I, I got an I I got a little bit before that. That's kind of when uh, things escalated to to the point of uh, kind of the global scale global event. Got it. Well, look, talk us through where it's at. You've uh, and on the Australian Cybersecurity Magazine, uh, we've we've put out a release uh, from the Australian Cybersecurity Centre. Uh, and then we've also got Matt on there with a video uh, talking through it as well. So you can check that out. But uh, I thought I'd hear it from your, from the horse's mouth, Matt. Um, there's a number of CVEs here and foreign actor involved. So yeah, maybe just talk us through what, you, what you've observed so far and uh, what the situation is right now. Yeah, it, you know, in a general sense, this was a pretty complicated uh, attack. Um, it falls into the bucket of a, a zero day where uh, nobody kind of saw this coming. Um, and the, the threat actor in this case was able to determine that there was a flaw uh, in Microsoft Exchange that they were able to, to exploit. And it wasn't only a single vulnerability. And there was actually four, you know, three or four unique CVEs um, in this instance that required uh, to be chained together to, to get the successful uh, exploit to, to happen. So one of them would allow you know, the unauthenticated bypass and then the other might allow you to write the file. Uh, in this case, a lot of the web shells that we've, we've been seeing. So from a timeline standpoint, yeah, you know, uh, I think the, the latest that I had seen was Microsoft uh, had been notified this of this um, in early uh, or December by a researcher, DevCore, um, in January, uh, they kind of initiated those findings uh, to Microsoft between then and uh, you know, January, February, I think there were some other uh, time, you know, other vendors or other practitioners who had uncovered similar activity through, you know, uh, incidents that they were working. They just didn't realize there were new CVEs at that point in time uh, that, that tied back to, to the event that they were looking at. And then, you know, Feb 26, 27 rolls around and that's when we see this escalation of kind of the global campaign to start uh, impacting all of these uh, exchange servers. And that's really when um, a lot of the kind of damage uh, was was done at that point. Um, Mar March 2nd, Microsoft released the patch. And as soon as that became public, that's when, you know, industry started uh, hopping on and determining whether, you know, what we needed to do at that point. And also kind of tipped off other threat actors at that point and other cyber criminals that, oh, now there's this uh, vulnerability that a lot of organizations haven't patched and won't yeah. likely patch for a while and just became a free for all. And these are, it's only the on premises uh, exchanges. So it's not sort of Azure or anything like that. that that's based. correct. The, the currently known impacted uh, versions are all on prem, uh, but dating back to kind of 2013, uh, 2010, all the supported, currently supported versions. So it's, well, you know, been there since uh, the existence of those versions. How long do you reckon the, the zero day was known for before it's been exploited? It's hard, hard to say, uh, especially with dealing, you know, the with the nation state uh, actor that was potentially using this uh, to begin with. Uh, it's hard to say how long, you know, they, they knew about the specific issue. We just kind of know the timeline as released by Microsoft. Um, and, and what do you what do you know about uh, Hafnium themselves and and their background? Personally, uh, not a lot. Uh, it's not haven't uh, met them. Our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I think the interesting thing is, you know, it may have been uh, state sponsored at, at the point of uh, the origination, but it's now certainly not just kind of state sponsored actors that are going after this vulnerability. It's kind of shifted to being, uh, you know, these web shells exist on these uh, exchange servers. Uh, it's kind of a anybody can start 
potentially scanning, which we have seen traffic uh, on the internet yeah. looking for the existence of them, and then begin using them to, to impact uh, organizations. So that's kind of what my uh, fear is at the moment uh, as a practitioner. It's, you know, organizations need to take this seriously and get it uh, one, you know, patched so they can't continually be exploited. Uh, and second, to make sure that they're doing due diligence and kind of searching and hunting around for uh, potential web shells or other artifacts that may exist in their environment uh, post exploitation. Yeah, I imagine you're probably seeing what ESET, ESET just came out, uh, I think it was actually yesterday and I missed the email, but um, I've got it in front of me now. So a number of APT groups are exploiting the latest exchange vulnerabilities uh, with thousands of email servers under siege, ESET. Uh, so they've got, a, I don't know, almost uh, 10 different threat groups are now sort of exploiting this. Um, I suppose maybe one one thought was the timeline on this. You mentioned sort of December, then the 2nd of March by the time the patch is released. Uh, and then it was only on Wednesday that the Australian Cybersecurity Centre came out with their announcement, uh, it's sort of a high alert announcement. So that's another 10 days after that. Uh, for a zero day, that sounds like quite a long time frame before the patch is released from the discovery and then through to say where you know the, the national cyber security centers are, are releasing announcements. Uh, and as you say, there's probably enterprise out there still yet to patch. Mm -hmm. What what's your observations of that type of time frame? Is that kind of normal or is it a, it sounds a bit too long to me? Yeah, I, th I think it depends on how you look at it. Um, they were obviously attempting to follow kind of responsible disclosure. And I think the original original timeline uh, kind of uh, follows that where it was disclosed to Microsoft. You know, they, they have to do validation and, and make sure that it's legitimate uh, and then really determine impact themselves. I think what kind of changed and what forced their hand a little bit uh, to release the patch early because it did come pre uh, patch cycle. Um, was this the event that happened on the 26th and 27th where tactics shifted. They went from uh, being kind of uh, silent and quiet to we're going to try to impact as many exchange servers as we can. Yeah. Uh, and that's what uh, kind of forced the hand to, to get the patch out there into the public domain. And I noticed Brian Krebs has put out, uh, I don't know if I've kept it up, but uh, the, the actual patches that Microsoft are releasing, uh, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously for this one on the exchange hack, there's four um, CVEs that have been disclosed. Is that maybe part of the reason as well is uh, because there is a lot of work to there to do and there's the uh, incidence of compromise that you need to check whether you've been compromised at all. So there's a bit of threat threat hunting there in, into that uh, the teams have to do internally and on-prem. Yeah, so it, it's, uh Certainly, certainly the case. So, um, you know, patching is obviously priority because uh, we want to limit the ability for somebody else to come come by and exploit it. But certainly, yeah. determining kind of exposure after the fact. Um, you, you know, we, we're kind of bucketing organizations into a few different categories. You know, some some are unaffected. They maybe had the vulnerable version of Exchange, but they never ended up getting uh, a web shell or no none of the IOCs that are known have have popped up on their on their networks. And then you have folks that have, uh, you know, had web shells created, but maybe they weren't used for any post exploit activity. It was just some general uh, automated reconnaissance uh, through that. And then you have the kind of third group of organizations where the web shell existed and there was uh, a series of commands that maybe uh, led to additional lateral movement in the environment uh, or some of uh, some other kind of data uh, data access and. That third bucket's kind of obviously the most severe because you, you definitely at that point need to, you know, enact your IR process and or bring in a third party uh, forensics firm to, to help assist in that situation. Got it. So a lot of the consultancies are busy at the moment and it is, would it be a matter of just looking at those, uh, the server logs at, at the start? Uh, maybe just talk us through exactly what they would need to be doing. Yeah, so the, you know, Microsoft has released a set of tools. Um, uh, the proxy logon PowerShell script uh, is a pretty good uh, identification of a potential exposure. It's not going to tell you 100% um, that there was a, a threat. Uh, most uh, solutions, uh, endpoint solutions have uh, signatures and protections out for the known artifacts at this point. 
Um, so if you've seen a, a hit on your uh, your endpoint product, um, you know you're going to have an alert in your in your dashboard or however you're managing that. Uh, the next step would be to review the IIS and exchange logs to, to determine uh, potentially how far back uh, it went because that is a pretty important attribute mm -hmm. here. We know kind of the large scale uh, exploit happened on the 26th and 27th. So that's where we see like a lot of clustered activity, meaning uh, they were created, the web shells were all created around that time. If you have something that uh, was created or appears to happen outside of that cluster, maybe, you know, 30 days prior to that, 15 days prior to that, that's probably something more uh, worth paying attention to because it could indicate that, you know, you're potentially targeted prior to the mass exploitation. Mm -hmm. And what was the, and when you say a target, are they exfiltrating data or are they looking for lateral movement and then just going to sit there? What, what do you think the, the actual intention was here? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, probably just general data collection. I, I would say, you know, I haven't heard of any uh, any incidents involving uh, you know ransomware at this point, but it's a possibility as time goes on. Uh, I would say generally just extracting information and data um, and gaining access. You know, a web shell is only a single uh, single point into an environment, so there's uh, certainly the ability to implant other kind of backdoors and things for future use. And this might have just been an initial vector. So on the back of, say, solar winds and the like, how does this rate uh, in terms of uh, sort of the criticality and the number of organizations uh, impacted? It's obviously a global event. Yeah, I actually think it's uh, quite a bit worse. Um, you know, <laughs> coming off of coming Worse off than of solar winds, okay. Yeah, or well, at least solar winds was a supply chain. But, uh, you know, again, do you think not related at all? Do you don't, you don't think? I, I think it would be hard to say at this point, and uh, the only way that we will find that out is uh, if Microsoft chooses to release something about it. But possibility, maybe, on likelihood, probably pretty low. But, but timing-wise, uh, you know, so sort of just keeping cybersecurity right there in the news uh, around and keeping cybersecurity teams very busy. Um, yeah. I suppose it's one of those things with, with zero days what what you obviously with the, um, the the managed threat response, so you tend to respond. I don't know how much sort of threat intel that you are doing, but the number of zero day opportunities out there uh, is you know should be expected. You know, there's a number of them on the market. We just talked about dark mark or dark net mm -hmm. there. Um, there are probably a number of them sitting there. They can't think they can be up to sixty grand US if you you can purchase them. Um, yeah, what, what's the situation around zero days generally and the expectation that there'll be more to come? There, there's always going to be the, the possibility for new new zero days. Uh, that market and analysis isn't necessarily our, uh, our wheelhouse, but, you know, just generally speaking, there's always there's always enterprise software and there's always going to be cyber criminals. And <laughs> when you have those kind of two things together, they're they're looking for uh, looking for ways in. They're going to go the easiest easiest route uh, in most cases, and that's why you you see cyber criminals maybe use more uh, easy to access avenues, credentials, phishing, things like that, and nation state uh, actors to use these more sophisticated uh, means, just because they have the the resources to put behind doing the research of uh, uncovering these vulnerabilities. Very good. Well, look, given the time of the day and we're just coming up to our full hour, I think uh, I'll put the post in the show notes as I do. I think I can just stick it there if anyone wants to uh, check that out. And uh, the advice from the ACSC is obviously implement um, the network security patches that have been released by Microsoft. Uh, and you need to check for those uh, incidents of compromise as well and uh, implement the web shell mitigation steps uh, also. Uh, on that link uh, is another video through to Matt uh, talking through the advice uh, about these new nation state attacks uh, on Microsoft Exchange servers. So look, Matt, thank you so much for that. Uh, any other takeaways do you think on this one or uh, yeah, other than they just have to sort of access those logs and implement these, um, these tools? Any other sort of key messages you want to leave us with? Yeah, I, I think the big thing is to uh, just uh, ensure that after the patch, uh, validate it. There, there have been some reports that uh, 
with issues in the update and it not uh, taking. So I would definitely recommend that. Uh, and then finally, uh, just because you have patched doesn't mean that there doesn't exist the, the web shell or an avenue uh, in. So uh, patching isn't the only answer in this situation. You have to follow it on with the, the hunting and uh, kind of review of those uh, logs to see if there's anything going on. And probably work on the basis that you've been compromised uh, and then work well, back from there. Very, as you good, say. Uh, very good attitude to have in this situation. <laughs> Very good. Look, uh, Matt, uh, am I saying your name correctly, Matt, uh, Matt Gangwer? Yep. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, you, you would have been good in organised crime too, mate, with a name like Gangwer. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good name for a, a darknet market, considering we've been talking about that. Uh, but Senior Director for SOFOS Managed Threat Response, uh, absolute pleasure. Thanks, uh, and I'd love the T-shirt too. I like it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for having I think me. I've got, I think I've got one, mate. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers, money. Bye. Okay, so that's uh, the Microsoft Exchange hack uh, and the threat hunting advice from Sophos. So I do pre appreciate Matt's uh, time on that. So look, that's pretty much it from us. Uh, I did have one slide that I thought uh, with ESET, this is the number of APT groups uh, exploiting the, the latest exchange vulnerabilities uh, and now into thousands of email servers are under siege according to ESET. Uh, this graph is the ESET hourly detection for web shells dropped via CVE 2021 26855, one of the recent exchange vulnerabilities. And I think if I go to the next slide, I can throw that up uh, there so you can check that out. Uh, and as Matt mentioned, so this 4th of March started around the Microsoft patch release 2nd of March. So you can see that uh, once that uh, sort of became known, uh, they've all jumped on board and started to hit it. So very good for me, Set. We'll put that on the Australian Cybersecurity Magazine website today. So look, that's it from us. Uh, please check out our Cyber War series. This is why we almost created this uh, series uh, based on uh, nation state APTs for China, Russia and India with the panda, the Russian bear and the Indian tiger. So welcome to check that out and just get rid of that. And that's it from us uh, on our Friday episode. Back next Tuesday. Uh, thanks for joining us on My Security TV, Tech and Sec Weekly.